this is a time in which you address the young people or the parents or the educators so you're on well uh, um, hmm, boy, where to begin a couple of times some young people have come to me as they do to any performer and ask what they should do and my first response is if there's anything else in your life that you feel you can do do that it's a ridiculous industry it's filled with rejection and disappointment um, the week runs something like this we'll start Monday morning at 6 which means that I get up at 4.30 or 5 go to the studio in the dark <laughs> get to work for a at least a 14 hour day a 16 or an 18 hour day is also probable um, so at that point you finish at whatever 8 or 10 o'clock you then have a 12 hour turnaround which means that you, you leave work and 12 hours later you're back in the makeup chair so the following morning you're back to work at 8 or 10 o'clock so already your clock is thrown off just slightly you then have a 12 14 16 or 18 hour work day so besides long hours and, and then you have a 12 hour turnaround so that you can see by the end of the week your clock is completely turned upside down you end up coming to work at noon on friday and we we would be working until 2 30 sometimes 5 30 saturday morning this was normal monday morning you're back to the 6 a.m start so just uh, to repeat just uh, in spite in addition to the long hours there was also sort of a jet lag type factor to be dealing with um, however when you're doing when you, what you love it, it it feeds you in a way that nothing else can so although there was a kind of physical fatigue it was a it was a wonderful way of feeling spent you felt that you were spent in in your chosen field um, you get home I mean getting home is ridiculous you sort of wave to the children who are long since in bed <laughs> you pet the dogs who sort of look at you as they used to live here um, you stand in the refrigerator and eat your dinner um, you learn your lines uh, at least take a glance at them as you can keep your eyes open um, scrape the makeup off your face and get in bed um, and hope that you wake up when the alarm clock goes off in the morning there's no social life at all so where's the glamour <sighs> I don't know Leon. the glamour is I don't know if it's glamour. Glamour was never really something that drew me to it, but the, 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 I can tell you where the joy is. The joy is in the work. The joy is in doing a scene with your fellow actor. I got to do a scene with you, Lillian, and, and I mean, I felt that we sort of clicked right away, and it was such fun. I mean, here we are, absolute strangers to one another, and yet there was a communication and this is what's so exciting about drama it's like standing in front of a painting and you and somebody else see the same thing you receive the same idea from that painting that same idea of anger or of love or uh, or of beauty um, it's this it's the communication between spirits be they friends or strangers that's the that's a glamour that's the joy there's first the process of you studying the script and then you studying what you can bring to that story you atoning with your character and then you turn up on a film set or a television set and and you have to hit specific places for the camera uh, you have to do the same business take after take there which can really throw you if you're not acclimated to that sort of thing and 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 the best way to get those skills I think is on the job at least it was for me well the advantage I had was that I was 18 when I came out and I looked younger so if there was a you role you still look 18 I can tell you <laughs> <laughs> thanks Lillian uh, if there was a role for a 16 year old um, they would sooner hire uh, an 18 year old to play the part of a 16 year old because at 18 you're legal and all sorts of things and it's much less expensive you don't have to have a, a school teacher on the set uh, so I did I was very fortunate I got to work uh, a lot playing sort of teen crisis of the week we did teenage <laughs> hooker I did teenage suicide I did you name it all sort of the perils of adolescence I got to do various movies of the week dealing with those topics 
so that's how I began out here. And you spoke Japanese, abs and you still do, mm -hmm. speak absolutely fluently. Well, I do, but I'd have no excuse not to because I learned, a, a, I learned Japanese and English at the same time. Oh, that's right. So it was well, very like easy. Three years old yeah, at the time. Yeah, it was very easy to learn. Now, I understand you told me earlier that you taught English mm -hmm. in Japan well, it's, at it's, the age of seven? I did. It's a bit more... Please explain. It's <laughs> what you did. It's a bit more grand than it sounds. Um, English at the time, and I guess still is, was a very popular language to learn, and there was a... A series running on it on the educational channel there in HK called Let's Speak English, and there was a professor who would sort of explain all the grammatical side of English, which to this day I don't understand. And he would sort of give me a nudge, and I, being the little blondie, would then say the various phrases with the proper uh, American accent. So I was there really as a as a gimmick, and the idea being that if this little brat could speak English, so can you. So, but it was a good experience for me to do. I did that for seven years, and uh, um, it was just something, we did it on the weekends. I'd go in and spend all day in the studio Saturday, and it was, it was fun to do. Um, I also feel very strongly about staying with the theater for, uh, at least for the beginning, and then forevermore through, the, through your career. It is the actor's medium. You're not at the mercy of editors or, or directors. Um, it is the pure communication between you, your fellow actors, and the audience. And the audience will teach you more than any book or any class could, I think, you learn about yourself.